Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad that you are here. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for returning to another video. Welcome to the very first Book Miss video. Today, we are going to be doing my December TBR. I cannot believe it y'all, but it is already time to do the final round of the My Bad TBR gameplay for the year of 2023. I have been now playing this game consistently for over a year and we have not yet finished it. So hopefully we will complete that in 2024 because I do have a surprise for y'all once I've successfully completed a full round of gameplay. But as always, we are going to start this video by doing a recap of how I did with November's TBR. Then we will jump into the challenge polls and then finally the gameplay. All right, so starting with the challenge polls, the very first challenge poll was to read the next book in the Hades and Persephone saga by Scarlett St. Clair and that was going to be a game of fate and I actually made the decision not to continue with this series and I know that sounds weird because I only just started it. I read the very first book for the Amazing Readathon in August and I actually enjoyed that book way more than I thought that I would and so I was like what the heck let me go ahead and continue but ultimately something that I really learned about myself this year is that I am not a romance series girly. No matter how much I like the first book by the time I'm ready to go ahead and jump into the second I'm really not all of that interested anymore. I really like one and done romances especially harder hitting types. I am more okay with companion series and I definitely do have some of those that are in progress that I will absolutely be finishing but for the most part with my romances I want it to be one and done. I don't want a series and I actually did start this. I got a couple of chapters in and I knew instantly that I didn't want to read it that I wasn't in the mood for it and so I just kind of went with my instincts and made the decision not to continue so I will be unhauling this. The next challenge poll I believe was random number generator and for that it ended up selecting the book of lost names by Kristen Harmel. This is a world war ii historical fiction which I did successfully read and the final challenge challenge pool was to continue in the Finley Donovan series by El Cosimano. So I did read the third book, Finley Donovan, It Jumps the Gun. Now moving on into the gameplay, out of the six draws that I did, I only had to select books for three prompts because a lot of the draws were like face cards and I didn't actually need to select a book for them. So the very first prompt that I needed to satisfy was a book box selection. And I believe when I made that video, I didn't have a firm selection because I had a lot of books that could potentially fit. I had a lot of holds at my library that I was waiting to come in. And almost immediately after filming that video, my library hold for Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister came in and I did read this. The next prompt I needed to satisfy was random color generator. So I needed to use a color generator that would select a color that needed to appear on the cover of the book that I was going to read. And for this, I ended up choosing The Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore, which I also did read. And the final prompt for the gameplay in November was to read a friend pick. So I actually went onto the Discord that I created for my channel sprints. I do weekly all day reading sprints. And in order to make sharing things with the people who participate in my sprints easier, I created created a discord and so I went into that discord and I asked the members to go ahead and look at my two reads list on goodreads make a few selections and then I would randomly select one and the one that won was Never Lie by Frieda McFadden which I did read and enjoyed. So November was a very successful reading month overall and that I completed my TBR and it will be taking no punishments for December and so now we are going to go ahead and jump into the challenge polls for December. Now these are going to be the final challenge polls for the prompts as they exist in here. This little guy is going to get somewhat of an overhaul for the 2024 year. I do have a video coming out that's going to explain why that is but I am going to go ahead and do at least three challenge polls we're going to see how kind the mug is to me maybe I will do a little bit more I'm not sure but we are going to see I do have a feeling that there are a lot of books in here that I've already read or challenge prompts that I've already satisfied or things that I'm not going to continue so we may have to pull a couple of times to actually get one but let me go ahead and take this one right off the top Stephanie Plum. Perfect. I need to read the next book in the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich, which would be number 16. And this is perfect because these are fun, fast, quick reads that I can get through in a day. If you're not familiar, Stephanie Plum is an accidental bounty hunter and these books are all about the shenanigans that she gets into and the quirky cast of characters that assist her. I really enjoy them. They're nothing substantial. They all kind of run together after a while, but I'm still kind of dedicated to the series and the characters. And so I'm excited to go ahead and read the next one. I've made some great progress in this series this year and it looks like I'm going to be continuing in December. And let's go ahead and do the next draw. True North. So speaking of companion romance series, this is the True North series by Serena Bowen. It is actually a romance series that I have quite enjoyed. I actually read book five a month or two ago and it wasn't my favorite. In fact, it was probably my least favorite, but I do plan on continuing because I think there are only eight books in the series. So I will be reading book number six in that series for December. These romances are set in Vermont. And so when it's set during the wintry months, you can definitely get those winter vibes. And even when they're not, I do feel overall that they are kind of cozy, somewhat harder hitting romances. A lot of the characters are typically going through some deeper things. And like I've Said, I've enjoyed my time with the series so we're going to go ahead and continue with it in December. All right and this could potentially be the final pull. Let's see. When I remake this cup I need to make these bigger because this is always a problem. Okay let's see. 
after I do. Okay, so that is actually a Taylor Jenkins Reid story. That is one of her backlist contemporaries. I'm a little bit nervous going in. Y'all know that I love Taylor Jenkins Reid, but I'm always nervous going into a book by my favorite author because I'm always so worried that I'm not going to love it. I also don't necessarily know if I'm in the mood for this one, but it has been on my TBR for a while. I want to read her to zero and this is going to help me do that. So we're going to read this in December. All right, everybody, those were the final challenge pulls for 2023. Now let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. Hello, everybody. It is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. This is going to be the final round of gameplay for the year of 2023. The board should look exactly as I left it after the last round of gameplay. We are going to do the standard six draws and see what we get. All right, starting with draw number one. All right, so we got an ace and depending on what color I draw, I will either have to move upon forward one or I will be able to move one from start. Two of my colors have none in start, so we are going to see. Perfect. I definitely needed to get one of those yellow pawns out of start. I'm not going to flip the board just to move a yellow pawn out from start. I'm just going to go ahead and move this guy to the free space there and no book will need to be chosen for that one. All right so my very first draw was an ace and the color yellow and I was able to move one of my pawns from start. Y'all know that the spot immediately in front of the start is a free space and I do not have to select a book for that so no book will be chosen. All right draw number two. All right, we got a joker, y'all. A joker is basically this game's version of sorry. So whatever color I pull has to go back to start and I have to satisfy the punishment prompt on the card. And in this case, it is to read something that is intimidating, which is not exactly what I wanted for December. So let's see what color I'm going to have to move back to start. This game is playing with me. I just get that one poor yellow guy out of start and now he has to go immediately back in. But I guess that means that not much has changed. So let me go ahead and move him back into start. All right, and then as a cruel joke, I ended up selecting a joker, which is basically the equivalent of sorry in my TBR game. And so that means that one of my pawns gets booted back to start and I have to satisfy the punishment prompt that is listed on the card. In this instance, it was an intimidating read. Now, of course, anytime I think of an intimidating read, I think of a chunky fantasy, especially because those typically take me a lot of time. But I was very honest with myself and I knew that I likely would not finish that book in December if I started it. I just have a lot going on right now and I wasn't sure if I was ever going to have the time to sit down and read because I do like to read those physically with my eyeballs while listening at the same time. So for this, I actually made the decision to read Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I actually have this beautiful Barnes & Noble edition and that's actually one of the main reasons I picked this book up is because I love this edition so much. This book was originally not on my radar. I've never read anything by Barbara Kingsolver before. This sounded like it was going to be a very heavy, thick, possibly literary fiction and I wasn't sure if I wanted to read it, but I do have this here and like I said, I do find it intimidating. It is a larger book and it is supposed to be a kind of retelling of of David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. So let me go ahead and read to you what it says. Demon Copperhead is the story of a boy born to a teenage single mother in a single wide trailer with no assets beyond his dead father's good looks and copper colored hair, a caustic wit, and a fierce talent for survival. In a plot that never pauses for breath, relayed in his own unsparing voice, Demon braves the modern perils of foster care, child labor, derelict schools, athletic success, addiction, disastrous loves, and crushing losses. Through all of it, he reckons with his own invisibility in a popular culture where even the superheroes have abandoned rural people in favor of cities. So yes, it sounds like there are going to be a lot of heavy Heavy, tough topics being covered in the story but it's also kind of giving me vibes of some of my favorite authors kind of like Kristen Hanna so I really feel like I could enjoy this I've heard nothing but amazing things about this story I do still find it intimidating so it's gonna fit that very very well all right draw number three All right, so we went from the worst card I could possibly draw to one of the best because now I get to move one of my pawns directly into home base so let's see what color I get for that All right, green already has two in home base and now a third gets to go. So I'm just going to take this guy that is closest to his home base and move him there. Then the board decided to make up for its cruelty by giving me a green and a green allows me to move a prompt directly into home base. I selected the color green. So now I have three green pawns in home base and only one active pawn on the playing field. So hopefully he will be in his home base soon. And of course, for this, no book is selected. All right, draw number four. Okay, perfect. Got a straightforward three in green, which is already close to be here. So let's do 
one, two, three, highly anticipated. Next, I drew a three and the color green. That landed me on the prompt to read a highly anticipated read. I know that this is probably going to come as a surprise because I think that this is a prompt that a lot of people would love to satisfy, but I think that I'm going to make the decision to use one of my many jacks that I currently have stored up to skip this prompt. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I could not think of a book that I was super hyped to read immediately. Of course, I have a lot of books that I'm so excited to read, a lot of books on my TBR that I really want to get to, but nothing that I really could say was highly anticipated. Nothing that I could say that I absolutely wanted to get to by the end of the year or that I would die if I didn't get to soon. Nothing like that. Nothing was jumping out at me. And I didn't really want to make a hasty decision and pick a book that I might not actually be in the mood to read. So I think I'm going to go ahead and skip this prompt just because I couldn't easily find something to fit it. And now I can go ahead and put this one back in the deck because I'm not going to need to hold on to it anymore. All right, draw number five. All right, we got a jack and as y'all probably know by now, a jack is a skip card. So that means if I ever land on a prompt or something that I do not want to do or cannot do, I can use a jack to skip the prompt, but it has to be applied as I'm selecting my TBR. It cannot be applied retroactively. So I have to make the decision before I select a book for the prompt in question whether or not I'm going to skip it. So I'm going to take the jack and put it along with the other jacks and kings that I have saved. And speaking of jacks, the jack that I just showed you was actually the jack that I just drew in gameplay, but I have a few others saved up. This was just the one that was on top that I grabbed to show you. But again, a jack is a skip. A jack means that I can skip a prompt that I landed on that I don't want to satisfy or maybe can't satisfy at the time for whatever reason. And so I went ahead and decided just to use this jack right away for the highly anticipated prompt. All right, so this is the final draw, but I've only had to select two books. So I might go ahead and do one or two more draws depending on how this final draw goes. So let's see. Okay, we got another ace. So let's see if I'm going to be moving forward one or moving a guy out of start. Green and yellow are getting a lot of gameplay today. And again, I'm just going to move this guy forward one. And that's a book with one of the five W's. So who, what, when, where, or why in the title. Then I drew another ace, but this time I drew a green. And since I had no greens in start, I had to move my one lone little active green pawn one. And that landed me on the prompt to read a book with the five W's in it. So who, what, when, where, and why. And surprisingly, this was very hard for me to satisfy. I have almost no books with those words in the title, which I was not expecting when I put that prompt on the Board. I really truly believed that that was going to be one of the easier prompts to satisfy. But I did find a book already on my shelves that does satisfy the prompt. What Have We Done by Alex Finley. I read Every Last Fear by Alex Finley early this year and I really enjoyed it. I did have some technical issues with it, but for the most part, I found it very compelling and engaging and I definitely wanted to pick up more from him. This is his newest release. It actually came out in March and I found it on Book Outlet for a really great price. So I went ahead and snagged it. Now I admit that I'm a little bit trepidatious now going into this because this is now one of the lowest rated books on my TBR, but I already have this and I want to give him a shot. This says 25 years ago, Jenna, Donnie, and Nico were the best of friends, having forged a bond through the abuse and neglect they endured as residents of Savior House, a group home for parentless teens. When the home was shut down after the disappearance of several kids, the three were split up. Though the trauma of their childhood has never left them, each went on to live accomplished if troubled lives. They haven't seen one another since they were teens, but now they are reunited for a single haunting reason. Someone is trying to kill them. To survive, the group will have to revisit the nightmares of their childhoods and confront their shared past, a past that holds the secret to why someone wants them dead. What have we done is an edge of your seat thriller, a gut wrenching coming of age story in a tale about the lives we leave behind and the secrets we carry with us forever. It cements Alex Finley as one of the new leading voices in thrillers today. I think that sounds absolutely fascinating. I liked his writing in the other book that I read, so we're going to go ahead and add this to the TBR in December. All right, let's go ahead and do one more draw and hopefully it is kind to me. All right, perfect. We have a straightforward six and the color red. So I'm just going to move my only active red pawn forward six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Most recent purchase. I'm going to have to think about that one, but most recent purchase is the prompt. All right, everybody. And that concludes gameplay for 2023. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. I will absolutely be bringing it back in 2024. All right. And the very final draw for the year of 2023 was a six and the color red. And that landed me on the prompt to read my most recent purchase. And I'm going to be honest and I'm going to cheat for this one. That's because I was looking through my spreadsheet of all of the books that I recently purchased and received. And out of the last four, three of them are chunkier fantasies. And as we kind of just discussed, I am in no place to be reading one of those right now. And then the fourth book was actually something that was recently gifted to me, but it is a novella. And I need to read like two or three other books before I can feasibly read this novella. So it's not even something that I could get to now if I wanted. And so I'm only slightly cheating here in that in the fact that the book that I'm going to select is one that I did recently receive 
received within the past couple of months, but it's actually going to be the next book that comes into me from my library. And so when it comes into me from my library, it's definitely going to be my most recent acquisition in that regard. And so I think that I'm going to count that. And the book in question is The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. Y'all know that I recently discovered Abby Jimenez this year and I fell in love with her. I've read two of her books, her most recent releases, A Part of Your World and Yours Truly, and I loved them both. Part of Your World is one of the best romances that I've ever read. And I didn't love Yours Truly as much, but it was still very, very solid. Prior to those two, she wrote a series of companion novels starting with The Friend Zone. Now I have not heard the best things about this book particularly, but I am gonna go ahead and give it a try because I do think that she writes relationships so well and she has a knack for including those harder hitting elements that just punch you in the gut and add a strong sense of emotion to the experience. Oh my gosh, this character actually has my former last name and the correct spelling of it too. Interesting. Kristen Peterson doesn't do drama, will fight to the death for her friends and has no room in her life for guys who just don't get her. She's also keeping a big secret, facing a medically necessary procedure that will make it impossible for her to have children. Planning her best friend's wedding is bittersweet for Kristen, especially when she meets the best man, Josh Copeland. He's funny, sexy, never offended by her mile wide streak of sarcasm and always one chicken enchilada ahead of her hangry. Even her dog, stuntman Mike, adores him. The only catch, Josh wants a big family someday. Kristen knows he'd be better off with someone else, but as their attraction grows, it's harder and harder to keep him at arm's length. The friend zone will have you laughing one moment and grabbing for tissues the next as it tackles the realities of infertility and loss with wit, heart, and a lot of sass. I do admit that I have a little bit of concerns going in that I'm not going to connect to this very well because I personally am childless by choice. And so I personally cannot relate to infertility struggles. I cannot even understand the infertility struggle. So I don't know if I'm going to emotionally connect to this one like some of her other books, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. All right, everybody, that is it. That is the final TBR that I'm making for the 2023 year. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that are on my TBR and what your thoughts are. I would absolutely love to know. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you were here, please go ahead and leave me a Christmas present emoji in honor of this very first Bookmas video. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I am participating in Bookmas, meaning from December 1st through December 25th. If I'm successful, I will post one video a day. So if you are interested in seeing what content I have in store, please also go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below because I love connecting with y'all in my videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with all of the books that I've discussed in my video. And until next time, y'all.